Hey everyone, Goker here, and welcome to episode 1 of Animated What Ifs. Now, you're probably wondering what I'll be doing in this series. Well, Animated What Ifs is all about thinking about animation in a different way. Depending on the episode, I could come up with a continuation of a standalone episode, think about how a plot point going a different way would affect the story, hypothesize on why or how something is what it is in a series of the universe, how to improve a work of animation in terms of missed potential, or even something completely different. For this episode, I'm going to be doing the first of these, a continuation of a standalone episode. And the series I'll be talking about is Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. But before we do that, let's get a little background on the series. Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends debuted in 2004 on Cartoon Network and was the second animated series created by Craig McCracken. The show features eight-year-old smart boy Mac and his rambunctious imaginary friend Blue Regard Cube Kazoo, better known as Blue, and their adventures at the series' namesake location. There, they meet the tall, polite, former basketball player Will, the cowardly, Spanglish-speaking Eduardo, the off-the-wall bird airplane plant thing Coco, the founder of the home, Madame Foster, her granddaughter and the home's caretaker, Frankie, and the rules-oriented head of the home, Mr. Harriman. In the pilot episode, House of Blues, they strike a deal that as long as Mac visits every day, Blue can stay in the home without being adopted out. Now, one day a few months ago, my thoughts went back to the season one episode, Worldwide Wabbit. In this episode, Mac and Blue inadvertently tape a tender moment between Mr. Harriman and Madam Foster. Blue proceeds to show it to Frankie, and the two of them then show it to most of the rest of the home's residents. Only after Mac warns Frankie about the repercussions of Harriman finding out does she go and delete the footage. But by then it's too late, and Blue has already uploaded the footage to the internet. Harriman, who knows very little about the internet, finds out about his meme legend status on the news. He's at first embarrassed about it, only to find that the people that arrive were inspired by the video to adopt imaginary friends of their own. And so he takes his short-lived fame in stride. So how would a follow-up episode to World Wide Web at Pan out? My idea is that, following the events of the episode, a network company invites Mr. Harriman and the rest of Fosters to make a show for their channel. Naturally, for such an episode to not be completely pointless, they would agree to make the show. I would imagine the show to be a children's edutainment show along the likes of shows like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, Sesame Street, and Lazy Town. Naturally, due to his established presence, Mr. Harriman would be the main focal character of the series, and everyone who appears in the series would play roles analogous to their personalities. Take Harriman himself, for example. He would be the one to go around Foster's helping others with their problems. In the process, he would not only teach others morals, both directly and indirectly, but he would also learn in kind, growing as a person, or imaginary friend. Mac, if he were to be included in the series, we'll get to that later, would be more or less an audience surrogate. While he would likely be a bit older than the target demographic, he would often be the one in the context of the series to grow along with the children watching the show. Blue, again, provided he's in the show as well, would ideally be the troublemaking what-not-to-do type of character and more often than not, the one who learns the main lesson of the episode. Despite that, he wouldn't be a complete monster, as he would still be Mac's best friend, and would often go to extreme lengths to defend his friend-slash-creator. If anything, he would be a jerk with a heart of gold. Will would be perfect for this show. I can see him playing three major roles in the series. The first is to emphasize being polite to others, while also learning to not let others take advantage of his good nature, with the episode where there's a will, there's a way coming to mind. Second would be to be the series' Sporticus, the guy that would inspire kids to be more active in their everyday lives, seeing as how he used to play basketball with his creator. And finally, third would be to help humanize to others those who have been injured to the point of disfigurement, with reference to the damages left to Arm and I have taken. Eduardo would be another good fit for the series. He would most likely be the series' scary-looking but actually sweet Rosita stand-in. In this way, he would not only teach children some Spanish, hopefully not in a condescending way, but he would also be pertinent to the don't-judge-a-book-by-its-cover moral. Coco was hard to place, until I remembered another season one episode, Store Wars. One of the B-plots of the episode is that Coco goes through several different jobs at the mall that Frankie and the others visit. 
This got me thinking about the concept of the Anything Muppet, a series of Muppet bodies that the puppeteers swap out pieces for to make a whole bunch of different, usually minor characters. In a way, Coco could fit this type of role to be somewhat of an every person. Frankie would be the kind but stressed person meant to show how hard work can pay off. Madame Foster herself could be in the series as a sort of elderly sage figure who has seen pretty much everything and can relay her experiences to the other characters. And keep in mind, all of this is with just the main cast of Foster's home. Imagine what the other residents could add to the series. Duchess being a recurring villain, Eura Trish teaching geography, the members of Pizza Party being the electric mayhem of the show. Really, the possibilities are endless. So naturally, there are benefits and drawbacks to everything. What good would the show do? Well, for one, it would raise money for the home, both via donations and whatever the network would be paying them to produce the show. Two, it would further amplify the word of the home, making it easier for them to take in and adopt out imaginary friends. And lastly, this would not only help the children grow, but to also help fulfill the imaginary friends staying at the home. After all, Goodwill Hunting established that imaginary friends are not merely companions for their creators, but are also there to help the children grow as people. But unfortunately, with the good comes the bad, and there's certainly a lot of drawbacks that the show could have. First and foremost, it would be a lot of work. Having a script, film, and edit anything takes lots of time, money, and hard work, and to add that on top of everything else would definitely be taxing for everyone involved. I can definitely see Frankie snapping due to the increased workload. The second would be what happens when the imaginary friends present in the show would be adopted out. It's hard enough already when they leave. Imagine what it could do to the show. Adopting out even one imaginary friend would mean that everything they bring to the show goes with them, which would raise quite a few dilemmas over whether or not they really should be adopted. Another one could be a potential repeat of the episode Blues Brothers, but on a larger scale. In this episode, Mac brings Blue to school for show and tell, leading to the other kids attempting to imagine Blues of their own, to the point where hundreds of failed blue doppelgangers are brought to Foster's. It's bad enough when it happened with just one imaginary friend in an isolated area. What would happen if this was done with more imaginary friends throughout the country and beyond? Then we have the network itself. Executive meddling has created controversy with many a program throughout the years, animated or not. Depending on the network, they could exercise control over the show to the point where the message of the show would be completely botched, they could attempt to assimilate all facets of the show, or they could put the show into an early grave. But perhaps the biggest possible drawback is that this could jeopardize the arrangement that Foster's has with Mac and Blue. Something I didn't mention earlier about the pilot is that the reason why Blue had to leave Mac's house in the first place was due to Mac's mom suggesting that Mac still having an imaginary friend was the reason why his older brother Terrence still picks on him. Naturally, Mac didn't want to give up Blue which led to them seeking the aforementioned agreement. If this show was to air, then sooner or later, Mac's mom would find out about the deal, and she wouldn't be too happy about it, likely to the tune of her ensuring that Mac never goes to Foster's ever again. This is why I suggested before that Mac and Blue may or may not be a part of the series, as even getting a single credit or cameo could be enough ammo to trigger that explosion. But these are just my thoughts. I want to know what you think. Am I right on the money, way off, or somewhere in between? Was there something I forgot about like a complete idiot? Let me know in the comments below. This has been Goker. See you next time.